Hi, everybody, and welcome to our Peach Melba demonstration. So, so very excited to have you joining us. Again, the chat seems to be a little less chattable, so put any sort of questions, comments, concerns that you have in the Q&A. We will have some time to take questions afterwards. Peach Melba was invented, yes, by the one and only Auguste Escoffier, and it was um, a very, very simple sort of little dessert. Basically, it requires a technique called white poaching, where we sort of take a um, simple sugar syrup and bring it to a boil and then reduce to a simmer and then we add our fruit in that and we just kind of let it steep. So it's a very, very slow, gentle cooking process. We're going to take that same principle and sort of turn it up on its head and give it a little sort of, I don't know, 2022 twist. So um, as Jason was saying, yes, um, I am a career changer. I had a Broadway career, I had a performing career, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, and then I uh, switched to a to pastry program. I graduated top of my class from the French Culinary Institute in Manhattan. Um, I had a very successful bed and breakfast catering business, couture wedding cakes. I had my own standalone bakery, which due to the pandemic had to all close. And that is what brought me here to the Escoffier School, where I currently teach um, uh, pastry arts, especially the cakes program. So I've actually been teaching cakes for almost a year and intend on staying there for quite some time. Uh, so very, very excited that this may be your first step towards making your journey into your personal culinary career. And I can tell you that this is the place that you belong. So we so look forward to having you uh, hopefully come and join our ranks because we have a chef me, but we do not yet have a chef you. And we're so looking forward to having that. So without further ado, whatever that is, we're going to go ahead and we are going to make a peach melba. So just give me one second and I'm going to go ahead and um, share with you uh, my little sort of workstation here. Now, I've got a bunch of stuff mised out for everyone. Mise en place means I've got everything at the ready. I have some sugar that I will be turning into a caramel. So unlike the traditional peach melba where we make a um, white uh, poaching, we will actually be making a caramel sauce. So I have water in here right now and a little bit of corn syrup, which will help so that my sugar does not crystallize. To that, I'm just going to gently sprinkle all of my sugar into the bowl or into the pot. It's a great idea to add the sugar after the water because then we want our sugars to hydrate. And in fact, in one of our senior classes, PA137, we actually spend a lot of time cooking sugar and making various things, confections, candies, working with caramel. So you see what I'm doing is that I'm actually sort of uh, taking my hands and I'm making sure that all of the sugar is hydrated. The heat is not on yet. And then once I know that all of my sugar crystals have been hydrated, I can go ahead and start the cooking process. This is one more thing that's really, really important towards making sure that our sugar does not crystallize. So we apply a little bit of heat and we want to always cook sugar at a medium temperature, not uh, a very, very high temperature. We don't need to let this burn as it were. While we go ahead and start to get that sugar cooking, I will prepare my peaches. Now, you may have been taught that when you're cutting a peach, you need to find the little seam, what looks like the bum, and cut along that seam. But they have been lying to you. That, in fact, is not the way to do it. What you're going to do is find the seam and then turn about, well, have 90 degrees, and then run your knife along that. And what you'll see happens when you twist it is your pit is now standing straight out. And then you can just simply take your thumb and pop the pit out, and there you go. If you go ahead and cut your peach along the seam, what happens is the pit is now sort of flush, and it's so much harder to get out. So just rotate your peach a little bit, run a knife around it, give it a twisty poo, and then just simply pop that right out with your thumb. You're welcome. So easy peasy. Um, depending on how many people we're going to serve is how many peaches we would cut along with how big they are. So my peaches are a little bit on the larger side and I'm just going to cut four of them. Now what I can do is simply uh, cut this in half and then each half I'm gonna cut into three pieces. So I want them to be sort of relatively thin when I'm preparing my peach. Now, one of the very first assignments that you will do here at the um, Escoffier School of Culinary Arts in the pastry program 
is actually a knife skills assignment. So we'll have various fruits that you can go ahead and cut. So this is kind of a wonderful little introduction on that. And then you'll be able to present them in uh, any number of fashions that you would like. This would be a fantastic little recipe to go ahead and make and uh, poach those pears, peaches a little bit in order for you to present them. This recipe and technique that we're doing today can be used with any number of um, firm fleshed fruits. So right now, stone fruits are in season. Peaches, nectarines, apricots, plums, pluets. The list goes on and on and on. As we get a little bit more into an autumnal sort of world, apples, pears all work really, really well. Even cherries will work for this technique. Pineapple works great. The only thing that we would not do is a fruit that has a lot of water, like watermelon, uh, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, all of the berries, um, and citrus fruits. We need something that has a bit of a firmer flesh to hold up to that. So you can see that my sugar is now starting to boil, boil away, and that's fine. Once sugar reaches a uh, boil, never, ever stir it. You just need to swirl a little bit. We want to make sure that we are getting the, all of the crystals in the sugar are starting to cook very, very nicely. If it feels like it's getting too aggressive, you can always turn the heat down a little bit. But it's exactly where we want it to be. And what we're going to do is we're going to cook this until we have a beautiful a honey caramel, what we refer to as a blonde caramel. So we have blonde, and then we have like an amber and a medium amber and a dark amber, and then we go to burnt, and that's definitely not what we want. So I'll keep cutting along my little peaches here and getting these prepared. If your peaches are really, really ripe, they're going to be quite juicy. So as you select your fruit for this particular recipe, consider picking ones that are maybe ever so slightly underripe because they're just gonna get too squishy and that would be the technical term. I'm going ahead, cutting along, chop, chop, chop. The only other things that I'm going to want for this is an aromatic of some kind. So what goes really, really well with peaches? Well, I'm glad you asked. I've got some lemon here. And what I'm going to do is actually just take a little bit of the peel and then I will add into my recipe as well. So I'm just taking a peeler and simply kind of getting a nice couple of stripes like this. If it's really pithy, has lots of the white part, we want to make sure to trim that off, but this is actually quite nice. So I'm gonna do about the peel of half a lemon. And then believe it or not, I can actually save the rest of this and I could juice it at a later time. The other aromatic that I'm going to do, and this works really, really well with peaches, is some ginger. Now I have kind of, I don't know, it's about the size of my thumb. And all I'm going to do is just kind of get this stuff out of the way. I'm going to just smash it a little bit so it releases some of its gingery goodness. Okay, I can even break it in half like that. So that will be at the ready. I have my fruit and I have my aromatics. It's not necessary to use this. Pick something that complements the fruit that you're going to use very, very well. As we get into the fall, maybe consider things like cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, allspice. Um, there's uh, all manner of, uh, you know, orange works really, really well with some citrus fruits. There's all kinds of spices. Maybe you want to add a little bit of heat. So some cayenne or some red pepper flake. That also pairs really, really well with caramel. Now your caramel will take as long as it needs to take to cook. And that is really just dependent on how much water we have. I'm seeing lots of kind of fun things coming up in the chat. Um, someone has said they've got some plums. Plums would work just beautiful for this um, as long as they're not super, super squishy and sort of overripe. Uh, are there any questions that I'm kind of seeing in the Q&A right now, maybe about what we're doing thus far? I don't think so. Um, we have, we are at a, a little bit of a pause for a moment while we're waiting for our caramel to get caramelly. So if there is anyone that has a question, please feel free and go ahead and, and, uh, type it uh, in the Q and A, and I'll be happy to answer it. How dark are we looking for comes, uh, is one, a wonderful question. So we are looking for a blonde caramel. Okay. There's a great way of testing caramels, which is having like a small piece of parchment paper. 
And what you can do is you dip a little bit, uh, a spoon into your caramel and then drop it onto your a piece of parchment paper so you can see the color transformation. I usually never use a thermometer when I'm cooking caramel because we want to just go by color. Uh, mango also would be a very, very nice um, fruit for this technique. Again, as long as it is not super, super overripe or squishy. So temperature, if you were trying to go by a candy thermometer, the caramel stage begins at around 312 degrees. Um, but again, we really just go by eyesight. Once we add our butter um, and turn this into an actual caramel, it will continue to cook. So that's one of the reasons that we actually go for a lighter color and consistency because it's going to continue to cook longer. Guava would also be a really, really nice thing to do for this. Now, the darker your caramel, the more intense the caramel flavor is. So this is yet another reason that we bring this to a very, very sort of light blonde caramel stage instead of going like super, super over the top. Melba, excellent question, was actually a famous opera singer. And so this dessert was created in honor of her. So you know you've made it in the world when somebody names a dish after you. So we can see I'm starting to get just the teeniest, tiniest little moment of color. We're not quite there yet, but we're getting very, very close. And this is the, the time that we really need to kind of keep our eyes on things, okay? Caramel at some point is going to go very, 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 very fast. So already we can see that I'm starting to get a little bit more color. Now, I just sort of know from experience that we are very, very close. So now I'm going to drop my heat. As I said, it's going to, um, it's going to continue to cook as I add my butter. Even here, I'll just sort of quickly show you on my work surface what the color truly is. It reads a little bit darker in the pan, but we can see on my spoon, it's very, very, very sort of light. Mount in your butter a little bit at a time. Now it's gonna kind of bubble up and foam. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It's just the moisture in the butter and the fats getting all delicious. Add them a little bit at a time. As soon as the butter is completely emulsified, then you can go ahead and add your next little bit. This is also a place that you could add um, some vanilla, a little bit of hooch of some kind, you know, a nice uh, little shot of rum whiskey, that type of situation. So again, um, the traditional peach melba is done with a white poach, meaning a very sort of simple poaching liquid. What we're going to do in this case is make a caramel first and then poach the fruit in a caramel. So we're giving a lot of additional fun, good time flavor. Is there any concern having the heat too low for the sugar other than taking longer to caramelize? That's an excellent question in the chat. And the answer is no. The sugar will caramelize on a lower heat. It'll just take forever and a day. Because remember, you have to cook off all of the water first before the sugar can actually start to caramelize. So I'm finished mounting in my butter. And now the fun begins. So make sure that all of your butter is completely emulsified, whisk, whisk, whisk really, really well. And now we have this beautiful sort of um, gorgeous caramel color. This isn't really like a caramel sauce uh, because there's no cream in it. If we were to add peanuts and um, some baking soda, it would become brittle at this point. And now I'm going to just sort of gently place in my peaches. And hey, basically chef. kind of do a whole single layer. Chef, we have a couple questions here. It looks like uh, we have one asking if it would be better to use clarified butter or ghee. Um, and also one, doesn't matter what type of pot do we use? It does not matter what type of pot you use. You just want a, a like a, um, a uh, 
heavy bottom pot. So like an El Cheapo aluminum one that you maybe got, you know, as a free gift with purchase may not actually be the best. You want something that's got a little bit, a little sturdierness to it. Ghee would work. That's totally fine. Remember, ghee is just clarified butter. It's a 100% fat. So there's nothing wrong with that. Fat is flavor. Uh, you don't want to use something like a vegetable oil, you know, like margarine, um, coconut oil, that type of stuff. You really don't want to do that. Uh, for making veg vegetarian or vegan caramels, there actually is a bit of a different process altogether. So what I'm doing is I'm gently stirring the fruits so that they'll be completely coated by that caramel. And now what's going to happen is as they sit, the peaches themselves will release their juices. And that is going to thin out my little sauce. I'm also going to throw in my aromatics, just boom, de boom, 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 just like that. Give it a quick stirry poo. Now, depending on your fruit, if it's super, super delicate, you may not be able to stir so aggressively. And we want to just let that sort of bubble a little bit. I'm at a very, very low heat right now. What would be the equivalent of a simmer? And we're going to let that sit for about a minute or so. Shut off the heat and cover it and let it steep for about five minutes. Okay. And what will happen is as these peaches release their juices, this caramel sauce is going to get nice and thin. It will kind of almost become like a little gravy. It's delicious. You could serve it on an old boot. It's that good. So in one of our senior classes, again, PA 137, where we also deal with, um, but where we deal with candy making, we will do a assignment, which is somewhat similar to the peach Melba in poaching some fruits. This is sort of a nice riff on that. So again, cover it so that we can let that steam, cut off your heat, and we're gonna let that sit for about five minutes or so. We're gonna sort of fast track and cheat this for TV. And now it's time to make my cream. So the other part of peach melba is that it is traditionally served with ice cream. So that's what you can do with this wonderful caramel poached fruits. You could serve it over ice cream. You could serve it over cake. You could put it on an old boot. You could eat it stone cold out of the bowl, alone in the dark, like a lady. It doesn't matter. It's that, that good. But I want to kind of have a little fun with this. So instead of doing ice cream, I am making a honey whipped feta. So we're going to have a little, just a hint of saltiness here to complement the gorgeous sweetness. So I was inspired, uh, recently was at a restaurant um, that specialized in Mediterranean foods. And they had this really, really nice herb whipped um, feta that was served with a gorgeous bread just came right out of the oven. And I said to myself, self, because of course that's what you would say to yourself. You'd say to yourself, self, how can I turn this into a sweet version? So I was like, hey, let's kind of play around a little bit. So I've got some feta cheese and cream cheese at room temperature that I am putting in my food processor. And I'm just going to pulse that until I have uh, a really nice, smooth, almost type of paste. Then to that, I'll add some heavy cream. And I basically will just add that as necessary, along with some honey to sweeten that up. Now, of course, I could use also something like agave or even some maple syrup uh, or all of the sugar, other, other things that there are. All right, so we're just kind of pulse away. Make sure to scrape your bowl often because as anyone who's taken my class knows, a baker is only as good as they what? Come on, I see some ex-students in here. Tell me what it is, put it in the chat. A baker is only as good as they scrape and we need to scrape often and we need to scrape well. So we can see that it's kind of um, gotten a little pasty. So I'm going to add a little bit of heavy cream to that. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some honey. This is essentially a two taste type of situation. So if you want a little bit more on the saltier side, don't add so much honey. If you want it to be a little bit sweeter, 
Sweeten the pot. We're, we're sort of looking for kind of like a thicker whipped cream like consistency. We can see it's a teeny tiny little bit gritty just because of the feta cheese. So I'm gonna scrape again, let it whirl around just a tiny little bit more, and then we're kind of good to go. It is quite thick as well. So I'm also going to add just a scooch more, and that's the technical term of um, heavy cream to kind of get that a little bit on the thinner, spreadable, pliable side. Look at that, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's go ahead and give a tasty poo because you should always taste your products as you go along. That's really salty. So we need a lot more honey. So let's get that going on in there. You could also use mascarpone cheese. That would be delicious instead of uh, the feta. Um, and then you wouldn't have kind of that salty factor. Um, you also could just use straight up cream cheese on this and paddle it nice and smooth and then thin it out a little bit. That would also work really fine. I was just feeling a little bit bougie. So that's why um, I went ahead with the feta situation. Boom, there we go. Let's see another taste on that. It's really nice and smooth now. That's better. It's still a teeny tiny little bit salty, but I know that once I serve my peaches with it, I've got a real sweetness factor going on because of the caramel sauce. And that's sort of the magic of this dessert is we have a little bit savory situation and a little bit sweet situation. Again, this could be any kind of cream or you could just skip it and be like, let me get some vanilla Haagen-Dazs and call it a day. That would be just fine. So now that we have made our cream, Let's get that out of the way and go ahead and take a look at our peaches. Let me shift this on over for everybody to see. Ooh, ah, beautiful. So, so nice. Now, this is also a situation of we just kind of let this sit and steep for as long as we want to get the desired consistency and texture on our fruit. The magic of the white poach, as uh, done by Chef Auguste Escoffier himself, is that the fruit maintains some of its texture. So it shouldn't be super, super soft and squishy. It should still have, um, be like an al dente, as it were. So what we're going to do is give a quick strain to this. How am I doing on time, everybody? I know I talk a lot. Can You're doing awesome, Chef. We're doing good. We have, the, we have them all day if we want. <laughs> we do have a question here uh, from Michelle is asking, can you give it too long of a poach? Yes, you can. That is a, an excellent question, Michelle. And basically, you would know that because your fruit has now sort of turned into jam. So we want the fruit to maintain its texture, all right? So what I'm doing here is I'm straining this out and I'm going to kind of just sort of put my fruit back over my bowl here. And I want to show you this sauce. Beautiful. This is really nice. It's very, very sort of thin. Now what you'll want to do is allow this to cool to room temperature. And as you're letting it cool, you want to whisk it every now and then because we have our fat in here, our butter, our caramel, and our liquid. So if you just let it sort of cool naturally, what will happen is it will separate and the fats will float to the top and then the juice will float to the bottom. But we want this to kind of basically stay in suspension or um, emulsion 
as our sauce. So this is a little, this is a wonderful trick for all caramels, all caramel sauces, or any cooked sauce for that matter, is as you're allowing it to cool to room temperature, just gently whisk it every now and then to maintain that emulsion. Once it's cooled to room temperature, you can pop it into an airtight container and then store that in the refrigerator and it will be good for months. But I promise you it won't last that long because it's so delicious, you'll put it on every single thing that you can find. So this sauce will be a little peachy and our peaches are a little bit caramelly. -y -y -y. And so we now have this sort of wonderful combination. Of course, there's majority of the peach flavors here in the peaches. And this just has that wonderful sort of caramel flavor, the little bit of the, the umami from the fat that's in here, of course. And um, that is that. So we're going to pretend, everybody close your eyes for a second. We're gonna pretend that this is all nice and cool and fabulous and gorgeous and ready to go. So let's plate this up. Shall we? So I have my wonderful cream mixture here and even my spatula is a little gravy-ish right now. I'm just gonna kind of quickly stir that part in to my um, cream as well. Why not? So I'll just kind of plop a nice, very healthy dose of this right here into the middle, just like that. And then I wanna get a little bit chefy with it, right? Because presentation, we eat with our eyes first. So I'm just gonna kind of spread this around a little moment, kind of dig almost like a little path or trail in this, almost like a little trench, right? I'm kind of pushing it up to the sides there a little bit. You can see that nice little trench so that I have a place for my delicious sauce to go. And then what I'm going to do, is take some of this and I just wanna gently spoon that right into the trench. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Oh my gosh, you guys, I wish you had um, YouTube smell a vision and could you know kind of be able to sort of dive in here. Here's the thing. You also don't need very many ingredients for this. This is something that you could simply whip up this evening, no problem whatsoever. So I've kind of really created this nice sort of little drizzle. And then I'm going to take a little bit of it. And I want to just kind of now put a little bit of a lake around the edges as well. So that with every spoonful, I will get some of that delicious creamy sauce and some of that amazing peach caramel, peach gravy. Right. You could do this with a squeeze bottle if you had one, but ain't nobody got time for that. A spoon works just fine. Starting to look like something. And then I just want to place my peaches right on in there. Now, of course, in the restaurant industry, we would have some gloves on. You could use some fancy tongs that maybe somebody got for you as a gift something to say congratulations on starting your journey at the Escoffia School of Culinary Arts. What can I buy for you? You could say, please buy me some expensive plating tongs. I would love that. That would be a very nice present, okay? And so I'm gonna kind of place some of my fruits here, just like that. We always want to plate in odd numbers because um, odd uh, numbers are much more appealing to the eye. Our brain naturally wants to divide even numbers. And so we spend more time focusing on, oh, there's like six pieces. But as soon as we put seven in there, then our brain doesn't want to do the math because honestly, who does, right? And now, just to finish that off, I have, these are not croutons, this is yellow butter cake, one of the cakes we make in our cake class that I have cut up into small little pieces and toasted them up to be crunchy, crispy little cake croutons. So I'm just gonna kind of break that apart and uh, sprinkle some of that onto my dessert to add a little bit of texture because we should always have a little bit of texture, a little bit of crunch, Toasted nuts would work really, really well for this. But there you go. Ta-da-da-da-da. -da -da -da. Peach Melba 
2.0. Look at that. Gorgeous. Now, I'm not going to taste this because I have been requested to take some pictures of this so we can send that out to everybody and post it all over the social medias. So I'm going to do that. But what I will do is take a quick little taste of my stuff with a peach on it. And it's delicious. It's truly, truly delicious. Truly scrumptious, as one might say. And that, fellow past, present, and future students, is the updated version of Escoffier's Peach Melba. Can I get a round of applause, please? Thank you, Chef Steve. You are truly amazing at what you do. And uh, we are love, love, love having you here. As we see, we got some alumni here who uh, are coming back and uh, sticking with you. <laughs> <laughs> they sure are. Um, All I saw right. a couple of quick questions follow through. How many does this serve? As many people as you want to give spoons to. There you go. As much or as little. Uh, you could, this big bowl that I just did, I would share between two people. Um, there's enough in the recipe that you've been given to plate uh, for four. And again, if you didn't want to use feta, mascarpone, cream cheese, vegan tofu, something that's in a creamy type of world will work just fine. Thank you for all of the applause in the chat. That's a wonderful. I love it. You guys are great. All right, everyone. So do we have any uh, questions here that uh, didn't get asked yet or didn't uh, get answered that we can help answer here for you guys before we... Uh... Move on to our next section of our presentation here for you guys. I think I think we got them all. We were pretty good at at. Uh, I saw someone in the in the question saying trying to try and peach orange cayenne. I love that. A little bit of spice because of Absolutely. the feta cheese with that sort of Mediterranean inspiration would go really really well with that. Uh, a liquor could be incorporated very easily into your cooked caramel. So before you mount in your butter. You could do a little splash of like a rum or something like that. That would be great. It's also very kid friendly because you could have your kids help a lot with the cutting of the peaches. Um, they would be really happy to sort of make the cream while the um, the caramel is going ahead and getting stirred. Um, I did put the butter in the sauce. The butter goes into the caramel once the caramel is uh, cooked to the correct um, consistency, which we have provided each and one of you with the written recipe. Um, and so that in, uh, talks a little bit more in depth about all of these types of things. The lemon peel went in with the fruits. That's kind of the, our aromatics. And again, not necessary at all. It just helps to impart a little bit of depth of flavor. Um, the longer you cook your caramel, the more flavor there, uh, more caramel flavor there will be, but it will diminish the fruit flavor. So stick with the blonde caramel around 100, 315 degrees if you're nervous, um, and it will be just fine. And then strain out all the fruits. Those fruits can be stored, and then the sauce can be stored independently. The poached fruits, once they cool to room temperature, you can store them in the refrigerator for up to three days. But I promise you, they won't last that long. All right, perfect. Well, thank you very much, Chef Steve, for taking your time on your busy day today. And uh, we appreciate you having uh, demonstrating us some wonderful peach melba elevated. Which I'll thank get, I'll you touch so much that, for um, for having me. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I love this. We look forward to seeing you um, uh, with us, and hopefully one day I'll have you in my class. All right, thank you very much, Chef Steve. Bye, everyone. <laughs>